wonder, what is it like to be back in the city of arts and innovation where you're from? That's right. Uh, Winston Salem is my refuge. I, mean, I, I think some people might think that's funny. Winston Salem is actually my refuge. Um, I know the industry won't come looking for me here, although the industry is here. Um, for the National Black Theater Festival, and you know, a lot of stars in here. The rap world won't come looking for me. Uh, rappers won't come looking for me. <laughs> you know, this is my chance to come on and be Patrick, although I have, you know, the one year showing it. This is my chance to come on and be Patrick. And have you ever been to a National Black Theater Festival while you're here? Yeah, I, you know, you're from here, and I hear about it over the years. And I'm usually, sometimes I'm in town when it's going on. But this is the first time I've actually participated in uh, or have a, some type of participation in the National Black Theater Festival. How's it feel? It doesn't, you know, it's funny to see how people look at me because I still don't think, if you're a celebrity, like I was standing out here last night and people was coming over me last night. And, yeah, you're very down to earth and sort of you know low-key and keep it moving. Well, what's the Salem keeps you like that? You know? Yeah. North Carolina keeps you. I'm from Greensboro. So, so you know what it is. I know. I do know what it is. I so, do know I mean, what it you is. know, I don't. That ain't what I got into it for. Um, I think I said in the movie, I just got into it to, to make peace for a living. But usually the ones that don't add to a lot get a whole lot more than they in store. So that's, that's, I guess that's what's happening. And where do you see, where do you see the trend of music going or hip hop? Where do you see it going? I mean, when you were 15, you probably saw it going in a different direction. 20 and 25, what do you see? Everything runs in a circle. If you understand history, history always always repeats itself. And the wonderful thing about hip hop now is you got kids that are 12 and 13 years old that's learning about Nas through their parents. Because yeah. you got kids that were born in the 90s. Right. So they're born in the 90s. My son knows all about Nas. Exactly. He's uh, about to be two. Exactly. And, and he'll know happening. all about Night Wonder. And that, that's, that's what's happening now. It's just like as if we knew all about Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know what I'm saying? And we knew all about Cameo. We knew all about Motown. It's happening again when it's going to be a, a band of kids that come up to understand that a Tribe Called Quest is the... A Tribe Called Quest will be there Earth, Wind, and Fire. Because we're going to be going to see Tribe when we're 40, 50 years old. And they're like, man, my mom's and dad's went to the Tribe concert. It's just like saying, you know, my mom's and dad's went to the Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. Everything repeats everything and what advice and i you did touch on this in the movie but what advice do you give people who really want to be producers but it's, it's hard i mean you know as far as trying to make a living off of it i it's mean you're really it's, blessed it's 100 percent work man and, and, and i put on twitter a couple weeks ago it's friday night i'm in the studio where are y'all and yeah, like i'm in the club like <laughs> i say all the time man you know you you want to be in this, you want to be a part of this, you want to be a producer. You got to work at it every day, you got to own your craft every day. About 365 days a year, my, my music is on, music is on my mind. I'm doing, I'm dealing with, I've been dealing with the music every day, some shape or form for the past 10 years. And some people don't have the patience for that. Some people don't have the endurance for that. Some people don't have, they think, it's, they think it happens overnight because of TV and it does This is work, this is a job, I had to be in this morning. 10 o'clock, I didn't go to bed at 3. So, this is the job. And where do, you, where do you see yourself as I'm talking about like an old man, 70, 75, 80? I watched an interview on uh, Roy Ayers yesterday. He's traveling the world doing music. And people love him and love his records. And that's what I see myself doing. And to me, it seems like he's happy. To me, it seems like he's in a great space in his life. And he loves music still, and and that's where I want to be. You know, I, I've done great to stay out of paparazzi and all of that stuff. You know, what I'm saying you'll catch an interview with me on TV, but I'm like the person you hear about, but you really don't. You know, so yeah. that's what it is. And do you think there's a way that we can, or that you could participate in fusing theater and hip hop? Because uh, as, as my job, I try to get more young people to come to theater, but we may feel it's outdated. But how do you see hip-hop fitting into theater? Well, I think I think a lot of uh, theater needs to update itself, you know. Uh, if you're going to talk about the life and times of Harriet Tubman, you need to put a present-day twist on it. Uh, it needs to start there. you got to, I call it pills and applesauce. That's what it's 
call. Everybody loves applesauce, but the medicine you need to put in some of this stuff, you kind of got to, you got to kind of cloak it. You can't just force it on them to say, you need to know Antigone. You need to know that. You can't do that. You, you got to slip it in. You got to slip it in. Oh, Tennessee.